wife, Kim. I'm already starting to cry. <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody for coming out to celebrate this wedding for our beautiful kids, Matt and Erica Ridley. We had a wonderful uh, uh, celebration last night, rehearsal dinner, a lot of people there. We must have had 65 people because we had people from out of town all over the place. From California, we got Georgia, we have, you see, Texas and New York. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Yeah. Indiana, where else? Washington, D.C., that's right. And, and we even have a couple people here from another planet. How are things on Uranus, Bob? Uh, anyway, that's a planet. Listen, obviously a day like this just doesn't happen all by itself. There's just been so much planning that's been going on. There's so many people to thank, but I can't really go into the big long list because my brother John and my brother-in-law Gary, they came here mostly just for the food. <laughs> and they're really hungry, and so they made me promise ahead of time, please, just make me a short speech. Just, we, we, wanna, we wanna eat, we're hungry. I was like, come on, man. <laughs> so I'll try to do that, okay? But, so there, there are a few that I would like to thank, and uh, the first is, in my opinion, uh, the most obvious and I think the easiest to overlook, not only today, but every day. And without starting there, nothing happens and not much else matters in the grand scheme of things. And uh, I'm talking about our Creator who's given us this awesome day today. <laughs> So, I mean, you take a look at all the beautiful flowers and just the scenery and the beautiful sun and all that kind of stuff. We're all so blessed, and I feel so blessed to be here and have all of you guys here, and it's just, it's just terrific. So, uh, thank you, God. You're awesome. Woo! Yeah. And uh, I'd like to thank that lady standing over there, Mallory Davis, and the folks from this yeah. Yeah. Phenomenal job. We started this process back in probably September, and uh, she's just been just terrific in making sure that everything looks the way it does and it's going to run smoothly all night. So you've done a terrific job. Thank you. And then, of course, uh, special thanks to Jill Ridley, Cookie, Janice. Uh, you guys have been amazing. And of course, all of Erica's bridesmaids. You guys have been terrific just supporting this whole thing. And so, thank you so much. But there's one person who's been the driving force of this whole thing and whose attention to detail and organizational skills are unmatched by anyone in this known universe. <laughs> and we're made for a day just like today. My beautiful bride, 31 years. You are, and you have been uh, absolutely amazing making this day magical for our daughter. I really appreciate that. And now you see where Erica gets her beauty. <laughs> One of the challenges that, that uh, we have, anybody that's been through this process knows, is that you, you got to start with an invitation list. Who we invite to this deal, you know? And uh, it's hard because, you know, you have some certain limitations. I mean, my checkbook's on the few, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, then this is what it is. But anyway, so when you're going through that process, you come to realize that uh, it's not just a marriage of, of two people. You start looking at these families and you realize it's a marriage of families in a way You've got the groom's family and bride's family, and then you realize that there are 
other extended families that we all have, that we all feel make our lives more important, to give our lives meaning that are important to us. I mean, we have our, we have our church families, we have our work families, and we have our ski team families. <laughs> And we've got some friends that have become and feel like part of our families. All these families care so much for us and they care so much for our kids. And they want to share these moments with us and we just appreciate that. Appreciate all of the families that are here. So thank you all again for coming. And Life's just not all that simple, is it? I mean, marriage is a, it's a tricky thing when you're bringing families together, and just because a, a couple of people get married that love each other to death, uh, love each other, and get along, doesn't mean that the families are going to get along, too. Amen? Amen. It gets complicated. And, uh, you know, so there's, there's a book, one of my favorite authors is a guy by the name of John Ortberg, and he wrote a book that uh, explains that reason. Everybody's normal until you get to know them. <laughs> and once some of you guys that I haven't met get to know me, you'll understand what that means a little bit more. Uh, and that's why I feel blessed that uh, Erica and Matt have these families on both sides that love them and support them and get along so well with each other, so far. <laughs> and other than her immediate family, I can't imagine a situation where Erica could have been surrounded by more positive role models than her ski team family, and specifically, more specifically, the rival family. And it started, yeah, the rival family. And it started when Erica was about 9 to 10 years old, and uh, she joined the Chippewa Lake ski team and soon got to know all the other kids. And one of those kids was a kid by the name of Matt Ridley. <laughs> Happy-go-lucky, athletic young boy who was always smiling, always having fun. That hasn't changed much. <laughs> and Matt and Erica got to be the best friends over the years, and she spent a lot of time hanging out with the Ridleys and spending time because they would... Doug and I were talking about it last night at, at the rehearsal dinner because these ski practices would go till 9 o'clock at night and then they'd go back to the lake house and then they'd be talking about planning and the lineups and the ski team has been one of the best in, in the country for a number of years because of all the ski team families teaching these kids the, the value of hard work and setting goals and achieving those goals and so they would get together and just talk about that and Eric would just spend the night over there and they'd take care of her. They, brought her underneath her wing, and so we just appreciate that so much. And so it's, it's been kind of a cool thing. And uh, their friendship grew deeper as they grew older, and eventually they developed a, a special trust, kind of a, a special love without being in love. And even though they went different to different schools, they, take, they stayed in touch and confided in each other while trying to navigate the world of junior high and high school and while waiting for another summer to come along. And Kim and I eventually got involved in the ski team too, and uh, it was really a lot of fun. We got to know Doug and Jill a little bit better, and that was neat, some of the other ski team families. But things changed when Erica graduated, moved to New York to chase her dreams. But the day before she left, Matt came over to the house. And they stayed up to the wee hours of the night just talking, and uh, and she was gone. And uh, after living in New York for a couple of years, I mean, they still take, stayed in touch, but then there's a song that came on the radio that became their song. And they would think about each other every time the song came on. And it starts out, hey there, Delilah, what's it like in New York City? You're a thousand miles away, but girl, tonight you look so pretty. Yes, you do. Times Square can't shine as bright as you. You know it's true. Oh, it's what you do to me. It's what you do to me. 
So I would think about it too every time that song would come on. Lie. A couple years later, Erica came home for a surprise birthday party and they got together and compared notes and said, man, life's kind of hard. You know, and, and they just realized that they still cared for each other, and they still missed each other, and they missed those summers on the lake with families and being with uh, their friends. And uh, over the last couple of years, they said, hey, you know what? Uh, they've fallen in love. And, and it's just a, it's a love story is what we have here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> daughter. I hope your daughter finds a man that's everything that Matt is. A man of steel and velvet. Tough and tender. A warrior and a lover of God, his wife, his children, his family, and his friends. And the bonus for me is we become friends. We laugh and talk about deep things. We share the same values. Matt, I'm proud of who you are, how far you've come, and who you're becoming. Thank you for the vows you've made to my daughter. It's all that I could hope for, and it's everything that I expect. Because she's my baby. <laughs> my princess and my little girl. This brings me to you. <laughs> Matt, give her a kiss, would you? Yeah! You look so beautiful, and though it doesn't seem possible, anybody that knows her realizes that she's even more beautiful on the inside than she is on the outside. And ever since you burst onto our family stage 24 years ago, <laughs> you've given us moments that have been breathtaking, that have taken our breath away. You've captivated our imagination with your beauty, your zest for life and your sense of humor. And you've won our hearts with your passion, your tenderness, your loyalty, and your love. Your family, your friends, God and little Uriah. You've given me such great memories, huh? Like driving in the winning run to help the Hartville Honey softball team win the championship. <laughs> And then being able to coach you and uh, watch you play basketball when you were growing up, uh, it was a lot of fun in junior high and high school. And I just loved the way you played the game, with passion, with intensity, diving on the ground for every loose ball, playing great defense, very smart team player, all that kind of stuff. But in spite of the fact, you know, if you liked the game, you could have even been much better. She had a beautiful foul shot, went in work. <laughs> <laughs> what did you used to say to me a thousand times a week? I hate basketball. <laughs> One thing I was happy about, though, was, is that, that he did love to go fishing with me um, when you were young. And when we have a cabin down at Piedmont Lake, and all the uncles would get together a couple times a year, and she'd be catching bass as big, and all the uncles and me would be getting snagged in the trees all the time. <laughs> How's she doing that? What's she got a bait is she using? Look, Dad, I caught another one. <laughs> and then to watch you blossom when you hung up your basketball shoes. <laughs> For the last time that you put on your dancing shoes, where your smile lit up the football field and the basketball court on a Friday night for the halftime show as a member of the Lake Dance Team. It's awesome. But where you really shine was on the stage. One of your first performances I'll always, always remember when you're about six years old in a little yellow dress, <laughs> singing at the top of her lungs in the church choir, this little light of mine. <laughs> I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Well, honey, you've done that. You've let your light shine over these years.
So it's no surprise that you wanted to kind of keep that going and do something that you loved, that we all, and yet you were passionate about. And after being accepted at one of the top acting schools in the country, you moved to New York City to follow your dream, where you not only survived, but you thrived, until the tug of family and friends and another dream you always wanted came sooner than expected and called you home. And I couldn't be more proud of you at this moment and how much you've grown emotionally, spiritually, as a young woman and as a mother and how you've handled yourself with grace, with humility, dignity. Your performance goes way beyond winning an Academy Award. And it's far more important because this performance isn't like a movie that's wrapped up in two hours. And it's acting. This, this performance is real life. It's ongoing. And it counts. Not only for today, but for years to come and beyond this life. I'm just so proud of you, Eric. So thank you, hon, for giving me and your mom a rich and incredible experience as your parents and for the privilege of being your dad. You changed me and you challenged me to grow as a man and as a father and helped me prepare for my new role as a grandfather and I'm loving every second of it. <laughs> You got a good man there, Matt Ridley. And you got a beautiful son. And I, I know that uh, you love them deeply, and it's very obvious to see that they love you. And I, quite frankly, I think they both hit the jackpot, don't you guys? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I know I've tried my best to show you and tell you over the years and even tonight how much I love you, it feels like I've only scratched the surface, but I'm gonna have to stop right there because Gary and, and Jonathan <laughs> cut sign. <laughs> For the last five minutes, they're starving to death now. So I'm gonna wrap it up and just say, Erica, congratulations. I love you, sugar. <laughs> And we met in the dorms, and we instantaneously were really, really good friends, and we decided to move in together. So we move in, the families come up, it's great, and then we realized that we got put in the same class. And we're like, oh my gosh, like, I mean, I know her, but like, I don't know, not like that. So then we're freaking out, like, oh my gosh, we live together, we work together, we're going to school together, we're calling our parents, like, we don't know if it's going to work. Because we lived in one room, two twin beds, like, I slept so close to her, I could just like punch her in the face. I mean, I was like, you're like, that close. So for like the first two days of school, we like sat at different sides of the park, eating our lunch. <laughs> and then I think on the third day, we're like, what are you doing for lunch? I don't know, what are you doing? And ever since then, we've been inseparable, I think. Um, and that's how Generica came about. It was no longer G-Money and e Boogie, it was just Generica. <laughs> right, I would show up somewhere and they'd be like, where's your wife? I'm like, I don't know. Oh, there she is. I mean, where I was, she was. That's just how we roll. Um, but being with her for four years in New York, you know, she always talked about Ohio, and she was so homesick, and always about the lake. Every summer would come around, it was hard for her, because it was a really big part of her life. Ski team, I was like, what the heck, ski team? Oh my gosh, I've watched videos of people's impairments. I was very, very confused. <laughs> I still am a little bit, but I'm like grasping it. <laughs> um, and I was always hearing this one guy's name, Matt Lively. Matt Ryan. Oh my god. Right? Like, who is this? And, then, and we worked in the same lounge, me and Erica. So she'd put on this song by The Who. It was from this wakeboard video that they used to watch together. And she would just sit there, just play it over and over. And we were like working, like serving customers. And we would be like, Matt Ryan. <laughs> like, listening to the song. And I was like, who is this? Like, it's so weird. <laughs> so she had um, a quilt that the Ryan's. I mean, even Cookie made for her for her um, graduation. That was in our living room. I mean, I used it many times on the futon dizzle. Like, so I knew who the Ridley's were, but you know, I just never knew like what this Matt Ridley kid meant. I knew that he was somebody really special to her. 
um, for many years, and then after Erica moved home, which was really bittersweet for me because it was like losing my partner in crime. Uh, but she was always with me. Um, I got to come home and visit, and after her and Matt started dating, and I remember sitting in the Adam Trek's front room. It was me and Skye and Erica and Matt. And tears that just brought to my eyes watching them together. Because, you know, everybody looks, everybody wants that person to love them so much. And Erica was getting that from Matt. Which is what, I mean, which what everybody wants, because that's what she needed at the time. And just to watch them together, and me and Matt obviously became best friends instantaneously. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first time we went out, we were like having a heart to heart, and Dan Matt's like, you're my new best friend. I was like, sweet. His life got a lot easier in that moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, because now like me and Matt are the ones like up late, Erica's like, can we go to bed now? Like, One more story, Mom. One more story. <laughs> and so I think we might have to put a rest to uh, Generica, because now Meg is born. Matt, Erica, Janice, M-E-G. <laughs> 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 like I said last night, it's not their wedding, it's our wedding. <laughs> Um, we always used to sit around and Erica would be like, oh, like trying to do laundry in New York. How am I ever going to have a husband and kids? <laughs> Just complaining, like, look at you now. I mean, super mom of the year. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've never been more proud of you. I've never been more proud to stand up here and say that I'm your best friend. Will thanks me. This is my pleasure. It has been such an experience to be such a part of your big day. And you know I love you guys so much. Um, and what awesome parents we have. You guys have the best role models to grow up and to watch them in their marriages. And you guys are gonna have the same, if not better, I know it. Because you have such good, you have such a good support system and family since the beginning. Um, yes. <laughs> um, what a family how this day is. This isn't a normal wedding. It doesn't feel like it. I know everybody in here feels it. This is a celebration. This is a fairy tale. It's amazing, and I remember um, sitting in New York with Erica, right when like things were kind of getting tough. You know, we had some highs and some lows, and we were sitting on a little APT, feeling sorry for ourselves or something of that sort. <laughs> and um, we were both crying, and I remember, right, it was right before you moved home, and I remember saying, um, you know, you can still have it all. And you know, I stand here, and I'm, I'm wrong, because this is so much better than having it all. I love you guys so much. I'm so happy to be here. That's my Really, I just want to thank Matt for being my, my soul brother. Like, that's how I look at it. Like, you know, you could have a best friend, you could have a friend, and, and that's one in, you know, dime a dozen. But me and Matt got, like, a special bond that we never really even saw happen, you know? And he came into my life at a very hard time in my life where I needed somebody there. And that man was there for me. And he came and saw me, you know, whenever he could. And he would visit me, and he would... Give me hope, you know what I'm saying? And the hope that he got was given to him from his family and the role models in his life. And he passed that along to me. He gave me that love when I didn't have nobody. And that's something that I had to capture forever, you know what I'm saying? And when I seen him there and he was showing me this love, I was looking at him like, man, what does this dude want from me, you know? <laughs> what, 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 do I, what did I deserve, like, a friend like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, not to get too sappy about it, but I was, like, really thinking that, like, what, like, what does this dude want for real? And, you know, he didn't want anything. And it took me a long time to, like, really let that sink in. That it was just like, no, nah, I'm here for you, man. Like, this is it. And that is a soul brother. That is something that is just like what you guys have found and captured. That's your soulmate right there. You know what I'm saying? Like there is no doubt about it. If anybody knows those two people or have even met them tonight or have you know been in any kind of contact, you know there is some type of special energy. Even in the building right now, like I'm feeling the effects of it. Like just standing yeah. here, like everybody. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. That's real, you know what I'm saying? And that's something that Matt has showed me, you know what I'm saying? Real. Matt and Erica have showed me what is real, what I have to look for, you know? Because I looked my whole life, you know what I'm saying, for something like that. And when you see it happen, you're like, whoa, like that's it. You know what I'm saying? And when I was a little kid, you know, running around the little tables, getting my little champagne, you're like, man, this party's tight. Going to weddings and stuff, just getting a little champagne, like, yeah, go, let me get some of that. You know what I'm saying? I, and I was like, what is this about? Like, what is this about? This is what it's about. You step in this room tonight, and this is what it's about. Yeah. The energy in the room, the people, the family. Like, I said it for y'all. Like, I'm feeling it, like, rising up. Like, everybody's getting ready to dance. Like, I can see it. Like, everybody's in it. I see it. I see it. You know, I just want to thank everybody for making this possible. I want to, I want to thank the parents too. You know, they, they took me, both of them, both sets of parents have took me into their lives in a most special way. You know, I've had, I've had talks with, well, I've had talks with the pastor. You know, that was doing. I, I forgot you were even doing this. I've had like a two-hour conversation with the pastor. He did a great job, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have special connections with all the people here, you know, and, it, and it's very real, you know what I'm saying? We got Dragon in the building, we got Young Louie, and we got a lot of good people in the building, you know, and I just want to, I just want everybody to capture that energy, and, you know, actually, I think, I think this is time for, like, a toast, right? Yes! Yeah. 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 So everybody raise your glass, I don't have a glass, but just raise it up, <laughs> wherever you at, we got some good friends in the back, yes! I want to see everybody yet, yeah, and I just want you to capture this moment and just let it ride for the whole night, you know what I'm saying? Let's hear a cheer for Matt, Erica, and her beautiful life together, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, thank you. And let's just, yeah, let's have a good night, everybody. Just let it Protect them. Oh, Lord, just protect them, right? Yes. 
Protect them. Protect their marriage. Protect their family. Let them raise up a knight who is fiercely after your heart. Let Uriah just continually feel the, just the amazing love of their mom and dad. Tonight, we, we just want to just hit the pause button for a moment and just say thank you for all that you are doing in our lives. We thank you for the food that we're about to eat. We ask that it just nourish our bodies, that it, that it fills us, it completes us. And I pray that each person here will, will hear your name, will hear your voice, will, and will find a, a reassurance and a, and a confidence and that your voice and your love will fill that void that's inside of each one of us. It is in your awesome name that we all say, Amen. 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 Yeah. 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 At this time, the head table will be served, and then all the other tables will be dismissed for dinner.